Genesis 10. This is the account of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah's sons, who themselves had sons after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. The sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Tagarma. The sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, the Kittites, and the Rodanites. From these the maritime people spread out into their territories by their clans within their nations, each with its own language. The sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Ramah, and Sabtika. The sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The first centers of his kingdom were Babylon, Uruk, Akkad, and Kalne in Shinar. From that land he went to Assyria, where he built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Ir, Kala, and Resen, which is between Nineveh and Kala, which is the great city. Egypt was the father of the Luddites, the Anamites, Lehabites, Naphtahites, Pathrasites, Caslahites, from whom the Philistines came, and Kaphtarites. Canaan was the father of Sidon, his firstborn, and of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvadites, Zemorites, and Hamathites. Later the Canaanite clan scattered, and the borders of Canaan reached from Sidon toward Gerar as far as Gaza, and then toward Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim as far as Lasha. These are the sons of Ham by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. Sons were also born to Shem, whose older brother was Japheth. Shem was the ancestor of all the sons of Eber. The sons of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram, Uz, Hal, Gether, and Meshech. Arphaxad was the father of Shelah, and Shelah the father of Eber. Two sons were born to Eber. One was named Peleg, because in his time the earth was divided. His brother was named Joktan. Joktan was the father of Almadad, Shalef, Azarmaveth, Jerah, Adoram, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were sons of Joktan. The region where they lived stretched from Misha towards Safar, in the eastern hill country. These are the sons of Shem by their clans and languages in their territories and nations. These are the clans of Noah's sons, according to their lines of descent within their nations. From these the nations spread out over the earth after the flood. Genesis 11 Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the account of Shem's family line. Two years after the flood, when Shem was a hundred years old, he became the father of Arphaxad. And after he became the father of Arphaxad, Shem lived five hundred years and had other sons and daughters. 
When Arthaxad had lived thirty-five years, he became the father of Shelah. And after he became the father of Shelah, Arthaxad lived four hundred three years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived thirty years, he became the father of Eber. And after he became the father of Eber, Shelah lived four hundred three years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived thirty-four years, he became the father of Peleg. And after he became the father of Peleg, Eber lived four hundred thirty years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived thirty years, he became the father of Ru. And after he became the father of Ru, Peleg lived two hundred nine years and had other sons and daughters. When Ru had lived thirty-two years, he became the father of Serug. And after he became the father of Serug, Ru lived two hundred seven years and had other sons and daughters. When Serug had lived thirty years, he became the father of Nahor. And after he became the father of Nahor, Serug lived two hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahor had lived twenty-nine years, he became the father of Terah. And after he became the father of Terah, Nahor lived a hundred nineteen years and had other sons and daughters. After Terah had lived seventy years, he became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. This is the account of Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth. Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was childless, because she was not able to conceive. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran.